Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we are finally, finally interviewing someone from Barry. So excited, the last public university. Hi, Emna, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, um, I'm Emna. I'm a fifth year, uh, currently I'm a fifth year uh, medical student at the BEMS, so the Barry English Medical Curriculum course. And um, yes, <laughs> quite excited to be here. <laughs> So what a lot of people don't know is that the original Academat five years ago was started with the help of Emna because we were together being like, we're going to take down the capitalists. <laughs> and, then <Absolutely. laughs> and then we paused it for like a while, but now Emna's back and she's going to help us finally complete the last public medical school. So my first question, yeah. Emna, is uh, why weren't you texting back for the last six months when I was asking? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. So can you tell me a little bit about <laughs> the English Barry course, kind of like what is your day to day like? What are the timetables like, you know, when you start in first year, is it morning classes, is it evening classes? Could you just like take me through like the day to day of Barry? OK, um, I mean, in first year, at least, and I think it's actually pretty the same for all the years. We only have classes in the morning. Usually they start from eight to two. So it's like three different classes. So two hours each. And then, uh, so usually a semester starts in the last week of September, first week of October. And then lately, in the last years, we've been finishing quite around December. Because in January, you do hospital practice and you go to all the practical. But in first year and second year, also third year, first semester, you finish like in January. And then you have uh, the month of February where basically you take the exams. And from March, you you go back again to university until, again, first year, second year is mostly like toward June that you finish. But in my case, I've been finishing toward May. So because we have hospital hours, so that's why we kind of finish early and then we go to the hospital. So it's it's mainly so, like uh, morning classes. And then once you move on to yeah. clinical years, your evenings become hospital time. No, 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 no. We just, we always have classes in the morning. It's always that. But since when you go to the hospital, it's better to go in the morning to do the rounds. That's how we basically, we finish the course quite early on. Like we finish in December, then January, we don't have any classes, nothing. It's just hospital practice. So we can go in the morning to the hospital, quite follow the rounds and see what's going on. Oh, okay. And then like, when are your uh, exams on your holidays then? Like, so what's the academic calendar like? Okay, so um, so again, we start end of September, last week of September. Then we have um, what happens is that you study until I mean December. Then you then usually exam sessions start officially in Fe in February. And what happened? What is good about the University of Bari, at least I think, is that every professor in each beginning of the academic year put a date for their subject for their exams. So it means that, for example, let's say I'm a first year, I have chemistry from the academic year. So starting from February, where I'm supposed to start exams from February to until the next January of the next year, he would put an appello for each month. And you Wait, for each month student, or like organize for each exam month, each month for each month. So yeah, you get exams so, every month. That's so good. Yeah, absolutely. I know. Um, so how is it organized? So basically you can organize yourself. So you can be like, okay, I want to take all the exams all at the same time, like all the different months. Or like for me, for example, now I finished the fourth year, all my exams, and I'm starting to plan a bit. What is my next exam? Since I like radiology, I would like to take it as my first exam in January. Then I'm like, okay, what is the next exam I can take in February? And I organize myself, then March. And then it goes like this. Of course, uh, then you can, you need 18 to pass or more, obviously. Uh, you can reject as much as you want. And you can repeat the exam as much as you want, which I find quite useless. I just accept and pass and move on. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so you just organize yourself. You're like, I would like to take this subject first and this subject, or some people go crazy and they just take everything within one month and then they're absolutely free. Uh, but yeah, I can't I can't <laughs> believe this because, OK, Barry is very unique in this aspect because every other university I've talked to and also in our university, you get February and you have all of the exams in February and that's it. If you're very, very lucky, a professor might put an April date, maybe if you're lucky, and then you get June and July and that's mm -hmm. it. 
So that's crazy that you guys get it oh, every yeah. month. That's so, I'm so jealous. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you, for example, what I did last year and fourth year. I had anatomopathology, so it's a big, big block. So I didn't study anything. I didn't do any exam in January, anything in February. I took directly in March. So my first exam of fourth year was in March because anatomopathology took me so long to prepare. As soon as I was done with that, I took specialty two, which is a block of urology, nephrology, endocrinology, and infectious diseases. They don't make sense, but they put them together. So it's basically all at the same time all four different professors, oral exam, obviously. I took that the next appello. So if I took March in April, I took that. I took that exam. And then I finished my semester in May when I took specialty three, which was the block of gastroenterology, general surgery, oncology, onco um, surgical oncology, and hematology. So that was, again, a block together. And I did that. Um, That's so good. In, in May. In May. And I finished in May and then the second semester started, except I was so exhausted that I didn't do an exam in June because I was so tired. And then my next exam was in July. Then I took another one in September and then I took another one in October. And that's how I closed my fourth year. I'm so, so jealous. I, I, I hate that so much. I hate that so much. OK, um, but so speaking of uh, exams, are most of the exams oral or some written like how, how would the like what's the modality of the exams like it's mostly oral really mostly oral at the beginning like in first year you kind of you start quite slow you, like, you kind of start with written like for example biology or genetics but it's I can count on my hand right now the exam I had written everything is oral it's really oral um it's really rare that we have something written Okay, so it's like a pretty classic. And you also mentioned kind of like mm. the clinical experience in the month of January. How, how do how does clinical experience in general work? Like you have the preclinical years and then you start going in monthly or can you like guide me through like everything clinical and practical throughout the six years? Okay, so when you look at all the different subjects, um, they are like how many CFUs are attached to it. So for example, with the gastroenterology, there were supposed to be, I think, three CFUs of just lessons, and then a couple for AFPs, which are basically these practical hours. Once we finish, uh, we basically just go and agree with the professor on how we should do the rounds, because again, you don't wanna put the whole class all in gastro in the same morning and everything. So we try to organize with all the different professors who we have to do practical hours, and we basically divide ourselves in groups. So for example, my class is uh, composed of just 26 students. So we just uh, divide ourselves into tiny groups, and then we rotate. So for example, last year, I did one morning I would be in orthopedics, the next morning I would be in uh, ENT, the next morning I would be in rheumatology, the next morning I would be in dermatology. We just rotate. Um, a bit, a bit around. But yeah. so we just go for like a month. But like you go to each of the depart. Like, okay, I don't know how to face my question because like for us, <laughs> we only go into the departments of the subjects we're studying that semester. So like when we're doing cardiology, then we go into the cardiology department. But for you, like you said, you went to ortho and then you went to ENT and then you went to derm. Day after day, so that is correct. That is. That's my second semester of fourth year. And I had those subjects and those subjects basically all had practical hours. So we had to organize with the different professors and some professor will tell you like, I want you to come morning and afternoon because they also have some hospital practice like in the afternoon, like I have patient coming in. Some professor were like, no, you can, I think my department is pretty chill. You can just come twice, three times. But again, once these mandatory hours are over, each student is basically pretty free to just go. Like I loved oncology. I went there for a month on my own in June. I didn't do any exam and I was just free. So I just went on my own. And then, so yeah, so you can just organize. And um, um, when does the practical experience kind of like officially start, like in third year or fourth year? Uh, it's supposed to start end of third year because in end of third year, you have the first specialty one, which is basically cardiology, pneumology, chest surgery, vascular surgery, and cardiac surgery. So that whole block is full of hospital practice. So that's kind of when you start. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like our AP one, which is applied pathology one. And we literally do those four specialties together as well. Uh, okay, cool. So like end of third, and then does it kind of uh, ramp up or is it like always in January? Like, do you go in random days? Um... 
Mm, so it's mostly in January because we do have, sorry, we do have lessons like every single day. And so we cannot just skip the lessons and go uh, to the hospital. That's why like we usually finish in December and then in January it's only practice and we go. And then of course, if you want to, for example, in February, we don't have any exams because it's supposed to be a full month of exam. So any student can organize themselves and be like, I like this department more, I would like to go. Like, for example, I felt I was lacking in cardiology. So right now I'm doing like cardiology internship on my own time. I'm skipping classes just to go to cardiology. It's okay. I, I won't tell anyone. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, a, that's kind of really cool though, that like you just go day, day to day. Um, okay. So kind of the last thing about on the practicals is because I ask this in every mm -hmm. single interview is that does Barry have dissections? No. Okay. Same as every. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we, no, no, we had some experience, but in the sense it was in the autopsy lab with our professor, he took us there. And I mean, he, we literally like, he would receive a call and be like, okay, patient coming in, just died. So we need to do the autopsy and we would just be there watching him and he would explain to us, but us working on cadavers or anything is no, absolutely not. Okay. So basically same, 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 same as everywhere. But the autopsy experience is pretty okay. cool because actually I think a few universities yeah. don't even um, do that. So moving on kind of to more like the administrative side of things, uh, how, what are the tuition fees in Barry like? Okay, so it depends on two things, if you have the scholarship or not, but here I'll talk just without the scholarship first. So they range from minimum 336 euro to maximum around 2000 something ish. Uh, and how you pay is that you start with paying this, no, this first fee, which is the 336, and then you would submit your ESA, the documentation at the university and stuff, and then they would calculate. And also it's not only based on the ESA, but also on how much exam have you done on your grades. And they make this random math um, they, and they develop the second and the third fee for you to pay around June, July, May, June, July. That's when you pay the second fee. Um, if you have the scholarship, then you actually pay just 136 and that's it. And then actually the ADISO for the scholarship gives you back 120. So in the end, you just pay a marca di polo of 16 euro. Okay, that, that's, uh, that's pretty good. And... <laughs> So, but what, what, how do you, how, how do you like attain the scholarship? Is it only needs based? Do you have merit based scholarships? Like, what are do you know anything about like the different types of scholarships and what's open to students? Oh, <laughs> I do have it. So. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm the perfect candidate today. <laughs> okay, so um, about the scholarship, um, I'm non-European, so I'm from Tunisia, and so I had to prove my family status like they have a full list on the bundle where they tell you exactly what you need to show but also in the system you need to show you need to have certain credits to get it but as well as grades like you need they it's kind of like the university they make between the ESE between the grades and how many exams have you done and the credits so it's all together but yeah Okay, so you get like a fee reduction and like perhaps like money on top of it maybe the Mensa yeah yes Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So in total, I think, uh, I'm not quite sure of the math, but I think it was around five to six thousand euro. And how they organize it, they kind of give you a cash, I mean, on the, in your account, three thousand. Then they give you seven hundred, but you don't see them. It's for the Mensa. So to go to the canteen and eat, where basically you just swipe a card. Uh, and the rest is actually giving for the alojo, so where you have the dorm. So here's the trick about it. If you if you apply for the dorm and you get it, then they don't give you the money for the dorm. If you apply for the dorm, but they don't have enough space, and th that means they promise you the dorm, but they don't have space, that's when they give you the 2,000 euros for you to look for an, an mm. apartment or something. Um, and then, but... And then there's the me, where basically I don't I don't want to live in the dorm, so I just refused the dorm money, and I said I'm just gonna live on my own. So I'm just taking the cash that they give me and the mensa. Okay, so that's uh, that's interesting. That so because I wasn't sure if uh, not only for Barry but in general, if you get the free accommodation and then five thousand on top of it, 
But I think so it makes sense that if you take the accommodation, then the 5000 gets uh, reduced, which kind of does um, yeah. make sense. And so uh, kind of. Mm, OK. And what then would your class dynamics be like? Because you said that you're only 26 people, which is very small. It's so, so small. So what are your like class dynamics like between each of the years, but also like inside the years? Like, do you guys collaborate a lot? Are you diverse? Uh, what's that like? Um, we're such a small class that actually my year, my, so the fifth year is actually the last where we are around the 26 from the fourth year going down, the, they increased the capacity to 50 students. Okay. So quite now, a bit. Yeah. Twice as big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we are quite international. We're quite small, but for, I mean, we go out, we go to sushi together, we party together. I mean, there is no, not really a lot of drama or anything is just we're just a small class and we like hanging out together okay and um, what about like sharing yeah. resources with the year above and the year below like do you have um, drives how does collaboration work okay so we kind of started it in collaboration with the year below below us where we started especially i mean with covid and the online uh, stuff we started taking recording lessons as well as working and getting notes and we created this big drive where we have the dispenses or all our notes as well as exam questions so if anyone had an exam wanted just to drop their question they would just go and uh, write it down and i have to say that to be honest from the fourth year going down they're they're doing it quite a lot i try also to share as much as i have uh, but from the year above it's pretty secret it's that they don't really share much so, okay. but we're trying now at least to change the dynamic. So if a new student comes to Bari, we give them the link and they can enjoy <laughs> the full drive. I think, I think that's kind of really nice to leave your course better than how you found it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, I really like that. So if, I mean, at least the year above you is going now. And so everyone below that is like working um, all together. And you know, like I kind of hate asking this question because I really think it depends on the professor and, you know, you're never going to get all good or all bad professors. But in general, like, how do you feel about the quality of professors in Bari, whether it's their English or their resources or um, like, I know it's highly dependent, but like, are you satisfied in general? I mean, there, I would say that really my lowest year where I even thought of transferring was definitely the second year. I mean, because not only I hated the subjects, I felt they were pretty useless. Uh, biochemistry. Uh, so I, don't know. I love biochemistry. Don't, don't talk bad happy. about biochemistry. I, I really, I, I did amazing in biochemistry, by the way. <laughs> but um, I hated the subjects. This was really not that much organized. I didn't like the professors much. There are, of course, some exceptions. Of course, there are some ex exceptions. But right on the spot, it was really my lowest year. I really didn't like it. On the other hand, the fourth year, when finally we started seeing a lot of clinical from, I told you, like, my first semester was insane, from gastro, onco, infectious, a lot of stuff. The quality of professor, I mean, to me was, wow. Like, it's it's almost as if they're at the top of their field. They knew They knew everything. And... I felt the course was perfect. I didn't have to look other materials to find where to study. It was, and the professor were very available to answer anything, with any question we had. So, so yeah, in first year, it's quite, you're still trying to adjust at that point. Like I, I just came and I was like, okay, maybe it gets better. And there were some professors. The second year, as I told you, was the lowest. <laughs> the third year got better really got better but then the fourth year was the really wow and even now actually I'm quite having quite a good time like my psychiatry I have psychiatry um okay hygiene like public health <laughs> radiology we have neurology bit complaining about the neurology lately but <laughs> so far so good the professor are quite good okay so they're like there's rough spots but overall like you're very happy especially now yeah, oh, okay. I, I would just say hang in there. Hang like, in it, there. It gets better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what about uh, like the resources that are given to you or like teaching facilities, libraries, labs, like everything that is provided by the university to you? How How is that? I would say non-existent. Oh, dang. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that I liked is that if I need to go read a research paper or anything, at least the Uniba 
email gives me access to a lot of websites where I could just go read research papers and function. But within the university, the library is it's, no, it's a no, it's a big no. Okay, but like, what about uh, studying in the library? Like, what about like library facilities to study in or student like hangout areas, things like that? We do have a lot of library within either the polyclinic or the hospital or in the main campus. The only thing I complain about is that you have maybe one or two that finish around like, let's say, 11 p.m. All the others finish quite early, around 8, 7, sometimes even at 5. So that's what I don't like. And so you kind of become like hunger games. You need to fight to have a spot. And I, I don't like that. OK, OK. But to be fair, I feel like that's like pretty normal. Like also, uh, I was talking to someone in Milan and they don't have any 24 hour libraries like at all. And so I think it's kind of normal, like even having one open till 11, I think is like pretty good uh, by standards. But OK. And uh, so you do have libraries. Some resources are lacking. What about like labs or um, like not a simulation center, but like because I remember you sent pictures of the day you guys did like the BLS course. And um, yeah, so like okay. how, how are like uh, teaching facilities like labs and practical things? Mm, it's quite difficult because usually it's up to the professor like we don't go on our own or anything it's mostly the professor who's like um you know i have this research going on or hey we have this course would you like to join there's also thankfully like the student association who go beyond and go to the professor be like we would like to organize this course uh with this cfus we would need some residents we need a professor we need these materials and then of course it is made and they're helpful but coming from the university itself no so it's up to the students and the student association to go and request um but yeah uh, there are but it's more us than them okay but i still think it's nice that at least the students are working hard towards getting uh things like that's that's better than nothing and students doing nothing uh either so the kind of the last question i have in uh like terms of the university because in the second part of the interview we talk all about the city because i think it's really important to also know about the city and pick a university based on the city um but that is yep. is there like required language certificates like do you need to ever prove your english do you need to prove your italian to go into the clinical practice no zero okay zero 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 um, the university actually started offering from last year, finally, some Italian courses. Okay, um, that's good. Finally. Usually they didn't offer it before, but now it's absolutely free for all, uh, everyone who is a foreigner, who is not Italian, who would like to do the course so now. But uh, otherwise, no, no certificate is needed. Okay, that's, I mean, that's good that you're at least uh, getting classes. So I think with that, I'm going to end the first part of the interview where we talked all about the university and then we're going to talk about the city, beautiful Barry.